All right, everyone, we are back for episode eight of That's, that's that. that. And that's that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. And we got the new uh, Dreamboats jackets here, hot off the press. Richie, good job, I'm man. Put him in motion. That's it. Let's, let's give him a little, a little taste of the back Twerk here. It. That's it. Twerk while you're at it. Sell a couple. We got the Dreamboats jacket, so uh, I guess the idea, we're trying to create the culture here with the Dreamboats jacket, and we're going to be selling these, Justin, what what were we saying? We're going to sell the first run for for a little cheaper, I think, is what what the idea is. I think that's the idea, yeah. Just got to give them people's hands. Yeah, we want people to be wearing these. So the first run of jackets, we're going to have a whole thing on how you can buy these and get your own name on it or whatever you'd like. Dreamboats jackets coming soon, and we just want to see like a whole sea of people rocking these at the Dream Boat Create shows. the culture. Just have people feeling included when they come to the shows. You could also get one of our names on it. Let <laughs> us know who your favorite Dream Boat is. So there's going to be a lot of Richie jackets going oh, around. Yeah, that. I know. That's the problem. Those are going to be the hot I'll seller. Just G-Wiz jacket. <laughs> Nice. So we got the Dreamboats jackets. Yeah, check them out soon. We'll have that link up on the website very, very soon. But uh, jumping, uh, I guess, jumping right into it. This uh, this week's theme is keeping rock and roll alive. That's been our, our motto, our, our whole goal with this band, especially in recent years. Um, I guess we've had a lot of new followers follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We have some videos that we're doing really well. And I just, I was curious to know, in your opinion, uh, maybe we'll start with you, Richie. For someone who hasn't known or has never known of the Dreamboats, how would you describe our band to someone cold just knowing our, our band for the first time? I guess if I can use the example of like some of our summer concerts or like or like a bunch, like that crowd, I guess you can say. Um, I don't know, just a good overall friendly entertaining um high energy uh throwback type show and just trying to create the elements of like the 50s and 60s of course and uh and just get people dancing and just to get the dance party going on yeah the dance party's always been our, our number one priority at least in the early days yes. um uh, justin how would you describe our band to someone who maybe who hasn't heard of the dream boats before what, what's your go-to i would just take everything he just said <laughs> and then i would throw the element of madness that has been uh, added recently there's been more so. madness yeah there has been more madness <laughs> madness yes i would say that i think what's a little different about our band though i know we do covers and i know we've been doing some of the original songs for a bit but we do covers but i feel like we're almost a cover band but yet we're an original band in almost every other aspect except for creating original songs like we have the merch you know we're all living together we're moving to another country but yet we're playing cover songs i don't know what are your thoughts on that is that, some... is that kind of right to say how would you describe <sighs> that i mean i get what you're saying but like at the same time yeah, we like. Yeah, we're not. We're not. We're not pushing the original songs these days. So I can't classify us as that per se. Um, I don't know. I, I I know what you're saying in that in the element of like the the camaraderie of an original band. Yeah. But uh, but we're but we're delivering this like era of of music. Uh, yeah, I I know what you're saying. It's like a little middle ground. It's like a middle ground. Yeah, there is a middle ground because we also don't. Like the audience and and the venues that we play is kind of different than that of of an original band as well. You know, we're not in really the club circuits at that much theaters and uh, city gigs and yeah, and somewhat amphitheater and, and kind of city for. amphitheater kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I feel like it's all the makings. The Dreamboats is all the makings of an original band minus the original music. And I think that was something we you know we've. If someone looks on our, our catalog and goes on Spotify, you'll see our recent cover albums, but you'll also see uh, some of our recent original tunes. And I guess with that, people ask us all the time why we don't do original songs. And that was a bit of a, a tough one to come to because we do like writing original songs, but uh, we just found it was it was really confusing to people. Yeah. And uh, not to say that we might not do it at some point in the in the future, but some of the diehard fans, you know, that when they when they just like this podcast, you know, anyone that digs deep beyond just the show will sometimes discover that we have written original music in the past. And, uh, it, it's, it's, it was just hard to kind of keep that going. Cause at the same time, our original music isn't so fully traditionally fifties and sixties. Um, though we capture a lot of those elements and a lot of the fun that we try to get of the fifties and sixties and, and whatnot, and, you know, last, uh, a couple albums that we did before and, and, you know, recording with Justin, there's like, you know, modern elements to it as well. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's 
you know, we're just trying to really just push forward like the whole uh, cover thing of no confusion anymore. No, no confusion. No confusion. That was it. It was the confusion was the issue. It was the confusion. Yeah. Even this is a level like, are there cover bands out there doing podcasts? That's what I'm saying. It's like, we're, <laughs> we just want to hear like, ourselves talk. Yeah. Our, no, but that's what I'm saying. I feel like our band, we have that story. You know, we've all come together uh, to play this music and we have that story uh, like an original band would, but we're doing covers. And I think, you know, we shamelessly like playing these covers and that would lead to our, uh, uh, our next thing here on um, keeping this music alive, keeping fifties and sixties music alive. That's our whole, our whole mo, Shtick. our whole, our whole model. But I mean, we love this music. What does that mean, uh, Richie? We'll start with you. What does keeping this music alive mean to you? How do you justify that statement, in your opinion? It's well to the older demographic, you know, that we played in a lot of the things and tra the trajectory of where we're going, you know, with theaters that kind of caters mainly to that kind of demographic. Uh, they've said that, you know, we remind them of the artists when they were playing, when we were playing and how they kind of grew up with them. But I guess you can say the way that I feel we try to keep it alive is really try to, um, I don't know, embellish our modern elements and interests into this band that could hopefully uh, capture audiences you know of, of all ages I guess you can say and I and I feel like that's a way that we kind of keep it alive whether we're um, you know having a certain type of you know element of stage show that's kind of getting crazy or we're skating or jumping or doing you know just getting crazy um, what else like, it's kind of like elements? a new wave almost yeah. you know although we're not yeah. doing it as an original band we're doing it as a cover wave it's like a new wave of it because we're putting these new new elements and things into the live show yeah yeah I'd, I'd say that that's like kind of like how i feel we're keeping alive and trying to keep it fresh for um audiences uh young and old is that like that they'll you, know, you don't have to necessarily hear this music i mean i've known of this music and all of the songs we play but you can still enjoy the stage show and with that you know being infused of like you know crazy elements of the stage show that you will be uh more inclined to listen to the 50s and 60s music that we are delivering. Yeah, that yeah. That makes any sense. Oh, I, I agree. I feel like it's, you know, it's kind of part doing the original songs justice, but then part, you know, keeping it fresh and adding our own spin to it. And I think our whole spin comes in, well, first of all, by just being really good buddies. I mean, we're all hometown guys, Mississauga. Canada and uh, yeah you know just being good buddies and you know laughing at the same jokes and bringing that energy onto the stage mixed with just shamelessness of feeling free to do whatever you want on stage and yeah. I think to me that is what keeping this music alive is it's doing justice to the original songs and I think we play them pretty pretty close you know we're not really doing uh, crazy outlandish versions I mean you could argue that maybe we should but we don't we yeah. play them in the so, way that we like them. Sometimes we do get a little crazy, but then we try to, as a collective, you know, be aware when other, when people are stepping out of that element and be like, hey guys, you know, we're kind of moving out of that or sound wrangle. a bit. Let's, wrang <laughs> let's wrangle. That's kind of, you know, the terms, you know? Yeah. yeah. We Pull try back. to keep it on somewhat of a leash. But uh, before we get into this next question here, I got to take this jacket off. I'm okay. too, I'm too take hot it off. here. So we're, we're past that segment. Take it off. <laughs> okay. Justin's derobing. All right. A lot of people especially the older demographic, the people who live through this music, they always come up to me, at least after the show, and they tell me how we bring them back to that era. And um, I don't know, how, do, how does that make you feel? Like, are there specific moments that you've noticed in the career of the band when you can just really tell that this song is, in fact... Like, for example, there's been moments where we've done slow songs like Can't Help Falling in Love, and I just see a couple dancing, you know, and... I don't know, you can just tell that we're really bringing them back to that era. It's something you have to really stop and think about it because I'm so used to just playing the shows. But are there any moments you realize? I know, Richie, you're serenading people sometime, like I'm trying. <laughs> uh, I mean, I even saw it last night. We did put your head on my shoulder and there was a couple over to, to my left and I just saw they looked at each other, grabbed each other's hands, walked on the dance floor. She put his, she put her head on his shoulder and they yeah. started dancing all slow. And it just seemed like exactly what you're saying. They were brought back to a moment in time and they were... And, and that's kind of what we're going for. So. Well, you know what I notice is that when you have uh, people our age and younger, when we do a slow dance, they'll dance. But oftentimes it's almost in like a... 
a, a joking way, you know, like they're dancing all old school. But when you get people who actually grew up with this music, they're dancing like it's intimate. It's it's yeah. it's a serious moment there, and sure. that really translates. You don't see that as much like with uh, people our age. Well, they're just songs that everyone I think from that from the older. If we're talking about the older demographic. Uh, they grew up with they know of and I think there was just moments and with our generation especially the younger ones like no one slow dances any anymore you know what I mean like there's when do you see any song that's like on popular culture like in you know, popular culture that like you know I, the first instinct is a is, is a guy or you know just grab a, someone's hand and you don't know I even mean? bring him in and marriages were, were forged on the dance floor back <laughs> in the day <laughs> I think so <laughs> a lot of things were forged on the dance floor yeah, a few back things. then you know, people, people knew how to dance and people uh, and like I said, you know, bringing them back to that. Uh, these are all, you know, our main goal was always playing songs that people knew, popular songs that not only people knew, and they were popular because they ended up in like the movies of the nostalgia yeah. movies that we grew up with in the '90s. So it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things that when you when you listen to those same songs so many times when you're younger, there's always going to be moments that you remember when you listen to them later on in life. And I, and and I think it's cool that we're we're kind of bringing them back to those moments, I guess. Yeah. Agreed, 100%. And it kind of takes us to uh, this next question here is that I know we go over really well with kind of the baby boomer demographic. And I know a struggle for us has always been trying to connect to a younger audience. And, you know, what have been, I guess, some of the struggles? Like, how do we connect with that younger audience? I know, like, for example, even our show, you have a lot of bands now. They're playing to to click tracks. They're playing to backing tracks. But when we get up there, it's just so raw and real. Do you guys think that connects more? Does it connect less? Is there something about our show that I, you feel can connect with that younger crowd? I wouldn't say it's been a struggle. I think just the idea of trying to propose this to new generation, uh, unless they really have something uh, growing up, uh, that they remember that brings them through the door, but I always, I always think that we, you know, we just went over any audience we we play when we put ourselves out there and and whatnot. But uh, I think yeah, I guess you can say, that how do you advertise to get you know a younger and yeah. demographic in, in the door? What the hardest the- hardest thing about the younger audience is getting them in front of us because they're if they see 1950s 60s show it they might not catch their eye but then if they come out to the show with a family member or something that's when we're going to win them over that, how do we get them to the show is the real question yeah sure and that's why whenever we've been given an opportunity to play at some kind of city festival or there's been younger people you're right it's always really connected and what i found actually really cool about moving to california i know you guys can get this but I find in California, especially in LA, you get a lot more younger people who know these tunes. I remember even yesterday, Yamava, I was talking to the bartender. She must have been in her 20s. And I was like, did you know the songs? She said, yeah. And I'm like, how do you know them? She's like, I grew up with them. And I was like, that's so crazy because I know we're, you know, we're kind of mid, late 30s. 20s? <laughs> and uh, you know we grew up with it because our parents are of that era but seeing kids right. in their 20s even playing with Andy on lead guitar you know he's in his uh, mid late 20s and the fact that he knows these songs he grew up in that LA culture you know there's like the low rider culture there's all of that stuff and they're really into this music and that's really stood the test of time so it's cool here in California yeah. that people get day, this, this is America this is American rock and roll so interrupt you but like yeah there's just American rock and roll at the end of the day and I think people are gonna you know it's going to find their way. At least a few of the songs. Like I said, the songs we do, I like to think that we're really gearing towards making sure a lot of people know them and they you know, have that element of the pop culture to it and references, I guess you can say. Well, I guess even the more important question is, do you think it's even important for this music to live on, especially for the next generation? Like we're, That's our whole thing is keeping this music alive. But do you think it's important? Why is it important to what, you? What can you define? Like what can you define as like, you know, if, we, if we're going to think about eras going through into modern times you know what's your first impression when you think of you know the 70s you know love and or, or, or like a disco you know, a, a disco you know, 80s what were you thinking about like that like what did that define you know rock and roll hair metal you know 90s you know what 2000 and then i just feel like right now there's not really an identity of what uh of what music and pop culture at least to me i sound like an old head right now maybe i i don't know but like, um, and I just feel like that era of fifties and sixties, it's like, there's so much that you can like think of, uh, that's very like, uh, you know, definitive on like the, the feel and, and, and the culture and, and, and the way, uh, it comes across like love, you know, rock and roll, good times, like, you know, the, the images of the, 
beach. You know, there's just so many things that are tied with that era where I think it's important to kind of keep that era that was so beautiful and uh, and strong, you know, alive. And so I'm thinking almost like almost 75 years, almost like quarter, three quarters of yeah. a century. You know, math. How do you make that <laughs> <laughs> relevant? Yeah. yeah, but um, <laughs> I, yeah. Two, yeah, I feel like it's important for this music to live on because uh, in many ways, the 50s and 60s music, especially early rock and roll is the bedrock for all of the music that has kind of followed it. And um, even the way it was played, like we say, you know, it's played raw. It was real. There was human interaction. There was an element of being entertaining. There was a, the heartthrob appeal. And you still have that now, but I guess there's a, there's just a, a much more edge to it, um, although you could argue that Elvis had a lot of edge. He was he was shaking things and, and getting banned, but I guess that's kind of part of rock and roll. But yeah, I think it's important to keep this uh, this original wave of rock and roll alive for the next generation because it's where everything modern spawned from. You know? Yeah, well, for sure. Do yeah. you have any thoughts on that, Just? I I mean, you know, I wasn't like the biggest fan of this era of music i grew up listening to a bit of it because my parents played that kind of stuff i think like the earliest videos of me like pretending to play an instrument was the beach boys with a broom in the backyard and, and, and elvis stuff like too, that right? and, and elvis was yeah. one of my fir first cds so i got into it but i quickly moved on to like what was happening at the times but i think being a part of the band and you know playing with you guys and playing these songs and getting in front of audience I, i've come to appreciate it a lot more and you know it makes a lot more sense now sure sure when we met you, you were a big uh, punk rock guy. I mean, you were playing in uh, in other bands in our hometown, always the punk rock guy. And then when you came in, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that one. I know that one. And you definitely brought a, an edge to this band. And that's actually um, that actually leads into the next question. Like, how do you think the way we play these songs keep them from feeling old you know what is it that we interject i mean in my opinion i feel like we just add a lot of energy to yeah, this that's, it's, that's what i was gonna say it's right just away. high energy like the whole show i mean people come up to us i'm on the drums i'm sitting the whole time you guys are hopping around the whole show like is that last 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 uh performance people were saying that i need to buy two jackets Whenever we buy another Well, jacket. we just started packing a blow dryer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the blow go. dryer. That's, that's been good. But, we, what, but, <laughs> but Cascade, there was only one set, so I didn't have a, t a chance to blow yeah. dry. It's almost embarrassing. We might need someone, a handler, to just... Well, how, how can you... Uh, I don't know, pushing tempos, that helps. Yeah. Uh, what else? Well, we definitely, we speed up the songs. We add a, a more of a crunch to them. <laughs> a little more right? distortion. What yeah. else makes it modern? I mean, some of the lead guitar parts definitely take, take it in and out of the era because some of it's like you know we're nailing the parts as they were but then there's kind of like some of those elements weren't being played back in the day so that's making a little bit more modern sure sure yeah yeah i mean um certain guitar technique but i mean every every guitarist that plays with a band is like that you know yeah. Yeah. I guess that's another thing that people always say to us, you know, when they hear that there's a 50s, 60s band coming in, they're always expecting the people to be like in their 60s and 70s, and then we show up and do it. And I, I think that's, um, I don't know, that's kind of cool, but I guess a little weird. I don't know many other bands doing this. There are bands that have the retro influence, but bands that are straight up showing up doing the 50s and 60s covers, I, I, I don't think people are expecting us when we show up. Especially in these jackets. Yeah, now. <laughs> really, these guys look like but that's always been, put That's together. always been the case, though. How many times have you heard that over the years? Yeah. Oh, I heard yeah, that for last sure. week. Yeah, yeah. 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 What are guys your age doing doing songs of this generation? And I'm like, ah, we got to tell the same, the same old story. Okay, I want your opinion. In your opinion, what is a song that we do the most conservative to the original song and then what's a song that we do so outlandishly different from the original song does anything jump to mind I mean at this point outlandish <laughs> would be like Miserloo gets pretty nuts like That's we're all I'm over thinking. the place we're almost like you know getting all like rock punk metal at times <laughs> progressive like throwing we're, throwing we're, drumsticks we're throwing <laughs> things we're jumping off of things we're flying all over the place you know we're all over the map on that one. Yeah. And Andy's ending the song with that uh, that epic like lick. Yeah, it's I love just, ending it with that one. That's that cool. one, we're, uh, we're definitely straying, straying far from it, but we're making it our own. Richie, That's how you make it your own. That's I, how you make it your own. Something that feels like closer to as much as I know of the songs, I would guess would be like something like Wander. But yeah. it's a... I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, do we that, play that one close to it? Yeah, that's pretty 
pretty up there, yeah. Yeah, you know, some of the other, like, Old oh Boy, or, oh, that one's even faster, Yeah. so, isn't it? I, I think, guess uh, I, that'll be the day, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah we One kinda, of those songs we do quite a bit faster than the original, but still we, similar. We have Wipeout that's, like, getting out there. You know, we have Johnny Be Good getting out there. Yeah, like, Johnny double, Be Good. Double time, like, dun, 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 kind of. Johnny Be Good's been one of those songs that we've literally played since day one 15 years I don't I don't even know How many times We must have played Johnny Be Good uh, Like It's gotta be hundreds Too many times Hundreds <laughs> For sure hundreds Maybe Maybe a thousand Approaching a thousand Maybe if you guys Have played that many shows <laughs> Oh yeah It's like there's been A handful of shows There's, We haven't done it But As of recent There was even like A halftime breakdown Going on <laughs> at some point There in Johnny Be Good If we <laughs> Yeah That song has just been Formed and forged For years Just moments Every segment of that song Has just been uh, yeah. Years in the making Because we try to, We try to make it like What was the feeling You got when you first saw Back to the Future When he started losing His shit on stage you know oh, I mean? for sure, and yeah. Like, and like, that's, How many people did, you know, and, and that and made and people want to play guitar. And I got you, yeah. like, interested in, 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 in the era. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And, and I think that's what we usually try to cap our uh, our show off with. Yes. Yeah. Well, what would you say? I know mine, okay? What is your least favorite song to play in the Dreamboats catalog? I will kick this off while you guys think. My mm-hmm. least favorite song to play is Pretty Woman. I know. Really? But you know what? I like the song. It's just like, I know it goes over well. I mean, I like playing it. I like every song we play for the record. I love the whole, the whole set. Obviously not enough. But if I had to pick a least favorite, it would be Pretty Woman. You know, pat, 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 pat. My worst. And there's like one or two that come up sometimes where I'm just like, do we have to? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm trying to remember like. Your songs. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, those ones. Songs you sing. (laughs) That's pretty much all the time. But no, there's like some other one. There's like, uh, as of recent, it's become, uh, what's the Johnny Cash tune? Folsom. Folsom has become as of recent. Okay. I don't know know why, but there's like, there was another one. I can't think of it right now. Maybe we stop playing it or something. I'm going to look at a set list. Yeah, if I had a set list, I'd be able to pinpoint it in a heartbeat. But the fact that nothing really jumps out to you, I mean, like, yeah, I think, I think we all enjoy playing most of the songs, you know, there's a reason. There's also songs that I enjoy to play more than others, like depending how I'm feeling vocally that day or there's yeah there's, there's other ones but for the most part you get it you know well i get it done I, one of them also is like whenever we start when we're like oh we're gonna play this song i'm just like oh god and then we start playing i'm like i don't know why i dislike the idea of this song because by the time we're like hitting the chorus i'm like i'm into it it's 20 flight rock oh 20. Like whenever i see it I'm, don't do it i'm like oh, i just love the group and then all of a sudden we're, we're up there doing our thing and i'm just like all right this is fun yeah yeah, right. yeah yeah well, um, I, I definitely know that Eric's favorite song is the Trini Lopez uh, Constitution, Right to Rock. <laughs> yeah, right to Rock. That's Eric's, gotta bring that one back. That's Eric's favorite song. got to dedicate to A-Rock. Read the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. <laughs> Look him dead in the eyes, sing a serenade him. Do you have a favorite song that we do? Like me in particular, or you want to let me? I don't know. I, I just had to think about it. For I've a been second. loving. I'll just say I've been loving playing Wooly Bully recently. Yeah, that's been a lot of fun. It's been killing it's it. Such a nice groove. Andy's that's been singing that one. Um, mm-hmm. He's been doing that for a while on his own, and then bringing it to the band. I've been loving playing Wooly Bully. That's been a fun yeah. one. Just any any fresh song. Seriously, money. Money's been great. Justin's been singing money. That's been fun. I've been loving that one. It's all right. I've been digging really? that I've one. Been I've, I've been loving it. I've been loving it. I love the when you sing "Do You Love Me" though as well. Uh, that's more fun now. That's yeah. one of my one of my faves is playing "Do You Love Me." Um, I don't. Know. I, I've been liking what I say a bit, getting the crowd into. I think I think it just gets the crowd going to me is 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 fun. They sure. go through phases. I yeah. think like the favorites go through phases. You know? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Well, um, like Beatles songs to me. One minute will be one thing, oh, yeah. and the next all, all like something else. For sure, yeah. I, I've been loving doing the Beatles songs, yeah. and those have changed over the years too. Um, I was gonna say, uh, you know, in thinking of keeping this music alive, we've been so fortunate to have performed some of these songs. You know, we obviously knew Ronnie Hawkins. Um, we got to uh, play some of his songs, have him even hear us play his songs. Um, and then when I think of another song that we do kind of really keeping this music alive and uh you know carrying the torch would be uh doing the hippie hippie shake Mm -hmm. um as people may or may not know we knew chan romero the original writer and performer of the song personally and even a couple months ago we performed at his uh, celebration of life after he passed away um i don't know to me i i'm kind of really 
glad that we do that song again and it's now part of the repertoire. And in my opinion, I feel like we now have to carry that torch and and keep playing that song like forever. It's a lot of fun to play it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. For sure. How how does it feel like just knowing that we have that connection? I mean, you were, you know, you you hung with, we we hung with Chen. Well, I think there's just an element of me feeling like I have to kind of, in, in the Dreamboats realm, pick up the torch of performing it. I obviously love the way Brian used to just absolutely destroy that song. Mm-hmm, sure. Um, but like, yeah, I've been feeling like uh, just comfortable singing, but also uh, knowing that the, the Romero family, uh, you know, really appreciates us and in, in, in doing it. And like, you know, it was, it, it's crazy even just playing for the family and seeing how kind of emotional they react, emotionally they react to it um, when we are playing it. It just makes me feel like you know ten times more that I just want to just just rip it and just. And it's been great to see that. It's been great to see them at a couple shows lately. They've been coming out to a couple shows around Southern California. I know they came out to Yucca Valley and it was like we did the. We said we were gonna play it and they had the whole crew, the Romero family. Shout outs to the Romero family. Um, Yeah, it was great to see them there. So that's that's been fun. I feel like that's one we're 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 carrying along. I don't know. Is there any other song like? Are there any other songs that you feel like um, we're kind of we're kind of keeping alive? Because I feel like we always try to do a list songs, you know. But there's a couple little hidden gems mm. in there that I feel like we like. Mm. I feel like Dua Diddy. I don't know if I hear many bands doing that one, but that's a fun one. We get them singing. Yeah, that's on that a good one. one. That's like that's like the the, the, the Full House pop culture. Album. Is that in Full House? Isn't it? Yeah, isn't it like is Uncle Jesse used to sing it with the uh, Oh yeah, the, the Michelle or something. We got to get Uncle Jesse out to we a got, show. I, I've been trying to John Stamos. Stamos? I've been Where trying is to he? poke at Stamos. He's not. He's not answering. We got to get Stamos out to a show. <laughs> I told you I he I was working at Casa Loma in Toronto and I was at the front desk and he was filming some scene. He was in a tux. And I was standing at the front desk, and he came. I was with my buddy, and he was like, hello, gentlemen. So he, he called me a gentleman. <laughs> Ding. Boy, was he wrong. Yeah, he was wrong. He was wrong. It was pre-Dreamboats <laughs> days, but we got to get Stamos out to a show. If you could, would lo- Stamos would love this show. I feel like he would. I feel like a lot of people would. And that's like we were saying. It's like the hardest thing is, uh, is getting people to see us and creating awareness. I think that's always been our, our struggle. And now, you know, we got the 360 camera. We've got um, we've got the Ray-Ban Meta glasses. Lincoln bio. And um, <laughs> we've got, we got so many things now. We're trying to just capture this show just to essentially get in front of people. Um, and make sure we don't miss moments because that's the thing with the with the 360 now we're able to capture everything we can well that's the thing find those moments and I'm glad you brought that up because there have been so many times like we just played at Agua Caliente and I felt like everything was breaking where you guys were bashing cymbals Richie was like his guitar was all mangled and he broke his guitar and I feel like if someone were to just see those highlights they'd be like what's going on at this show but this happens every show like sure. every show there is so much and it's almost like I feel like it's unbelievable if we shared all of the like antics that actually happen at the show and then people think we're a sideshow that's like sideshow but that's all right there's nothing wrong with a sideshow and no show no. nonetheless yeah yeah freak show <laughs> freak <Thanks>. show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. more freak show than anything I don't know what are you what are your thoughts on that like is it uh, you you've played in other bands you've played in bands it's like be like I that's one thing I I, I would say despise per se but like uh, unless you're like really trying to nail like a like a classic albums live kind of thing where it's like 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 just to the T and you can expect it and like I think like a and with us I like to think we like to put on like a show element and uh, and yeah just making people be like what is happening right now there's just so much I want it to be sensory overload I want it to be like okay. ridiculous I want it to be like you gotta see these guys you know what I mean it's not so even for- all about the music all the time it's just sure. more or less like just being entertained and genuinely doing because I feel like the, the attention span of the youth these days and us and ourselves as well uh it, it's hard to capture you know and what are we going to do to get that going you know? well i know we've all played in other bands but in your opinion where does entertainment fall and where does musicianship fall is it 50 50 at our shows or is the entertainment value a little more a little less in my opinion no, the musicianship i like we're in, we're playing a lot of songs like yeah. we can't be you know shit the bed on all these songs you know what i but mean but what's that ratio I, I think like it's changing think it's a, it's, it's night by night. <laughs> you don't know what you're solid, getting. It's a yeah. solid 75 musician to 25 show. I'll give it's it hard that. To say. I'll give it that. It is hard to say. On any given 70, night. 70, 30? Yeah. On 70, any given 30? night, you don't know what you're Some getting. Some nights yeah. we might be a little more chill and the music's tight, whereas other nights it's just like <laughs> total mayhem and there's a couple wonk notes here and there, but, <laughs> but the, the show, show is killer. off the hook. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, just starting the wrong so, chord for a low Josephine. And you're like, who? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, let or me run. hear that note. I'm more interested in running and getting, <laughs> yeah. getting my stuff ready Cleaning to go. Floor yeah, off. yeah <laughs> that was trippy. I was like, hello, <laughs> Josephine. <laughs> <laughs> just key change on the fly. I'm looking at Andy dead in his eyes, laughing I, his eyes When that off. kicked off, I was like, yo, who played the wrong chord? I yeah. just didn't realize you just didn't know what key we were hitting. No, no, I heard a low chord and then I just linked to it. <laughs> But um, <laughs> sorry, man. Yeah, no, it's all good. But yeah, you're right. You never know what Dreamboat show you're gonna get. Like, if it's an outdoor show, you might get Richie blading off the stage. Or if it's an Agua Caliente show, it was like we we had some aggression in that show. We there were, was, we were getting yeah, some. We we're all jet lagged. <laughs> yeah, we had gotten back from yeah. Canada, and it was like Didn't these got back in the middle of the night, which was like six or seven a.m. back in Toronto, and then had to just load in in the middle of the afternoon and get going. Yeah, yeah. Well, Even some people made some comments too. They were just like, "Oh, you guys were getting." I'm, that's I'm, what I'm saying. It's a my, different show. It is. My mom saw some of the clips. She's like, "And he broke his guitar. What's he? Why? Is, why would he do he something set it on fire like that?" And I'm like, "Well, here. he does that every show, yeah. first of all, and it just happened to break finally. Yeah, this show. Honestly, in. we could be so fortunate. And there's a degree to that because you want there to be consistency with the show as far as you know the quality of it and whatnot. But for the most part, anyone that comes to see us. You know, I don't want them to feel like they're seeing the same show every yeah, single it's time. And we have a lot of we have, we have a lot of, you know, the same fans coming out to come see us and stuff too. So yeah, exactly. Nice little balance of it. I know. I think we're even pretty self aware of that. You know, we're going back to Agua and we're just or we go back to a venue, we're just like, ah, we played this set last time, you know. We're always trying to kind of yeah. figure it out. Even if it means throwing in new songs that we haven't played in months. Oh god. Years. <laughs> Pull it together, <laughs> rehearsing and sound check. But you yeah. know what? <laughs> we pull it off, more or less, and uh, it just keeps you on your toes. Busy you can bees. you can always tell a new Dreamboat song though. It's just like <laughs> everyone's kind of a little more focused on yeah. that song. <laughs> That's kind of how that we're goes. We're self conscious. I know. I feel bad. We're always throwing you guys songs. We'll just, <laughs> me and, just like all right. Me and Richie been doing these songs for you know. Justin, you got it. Ten years. We're just like yeah. We're doing uh, yeah, all that, my loving. <laughs> yeah, you know this one. You used to play it three years used, ago. That used to bother me near the beginning, but now it's just like the other day on the drive into like the sound check. It's like oh, we're gonna do a few new songs or haven't played in like two years. I'm like all right, whatever. It's nothing Figure that it I out. feel. Nothing, <laughs> yeah. nothing to feel yeah. that you uh, that you know you can't do. At this like, point, it's like yeah, it'll be fine. It's one four five. Yeah, man. you're fine. Simple one four five. That's it, Richie. So. Uh, I guess some exciting things coming up. We're doing two uh, cool showcases. I guess oh, yeah. we're we're used to playing so much. We're not used to, I guess, doing like audition showcases. It's it's rare. I mean, we've always delivered in the past, but I guess we got what, what do we have coming up, Richie, next week? Well, we have the Disney. We've been trying to crack into Disney, um, and also the Western Arts Alliance in San Diego. Yeah, and yeah, I've got a fifteen a twenty minute. A showcase at Disney and a 15 minute showcase at the Western Arts Alliance that did not come cheap. <laughs> well, that's it. But I feel like anytime we've invested in something like yeah. that, we've gotten so many shows out of it. But the question is, how do you condense what we do, all the moving and shaking, into 15 minutes? Yeah, a lot of conversation today around the kitchen table trying to find a way to put like 10, 15 songs in, or basically 10 <laughs> songs into 15 minutes yeah. with every pull, every trick out every of the hat. Moment. Yeah, I know. Well, they said we have 15 minutes. They're like, oh, most bands do three songs. We're like, we're not most bands, okay? <laughs> we're going to squeeze in 15 songs, 30 seconds yeah, Cut them all piece. in half. Cut them up. Yeah, but it's like, how do you how do you get the handstand in there? How do you get the, the high kicks? How do you fit all that into 15 minutes? You know, we're going to have to do it. We'll, well let you know be, how it's it gonna goes. It's going to be intense. A lot of medleys. And a lot of medleys, which we haven't done before, but we're going to get to that. So that's exciting. We'll, yeah. we'll see where that kind of leads. And um, yeah, I think that's just going to, I think just moving forward, I think it's best to, because it's so hard pounding the pavement and hoping. I just want, you know, especially since we moved here uh, in the beginning of 2022, uh, just having people that are in a good position that could, uh, that could push for us. And, um, and, you know, we've done the whole theater thing as well, but, you know, pre COVID and, and that went over really well as far as the, even in the, you know, doing the showcases as well. And I think we shine in those moments and, and, and taking advantage of that. I'm not sure why we have been trying to really aim at doing this earlier. You yeah. know what I mean? And for really sure getting that going on, you know, and I had a crazy idea. This isn't even, it doesn't even matter, but I was like, why can't we go do these showcases like in other countries? 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but actually doing where the buyers are. Like, imagine we went to like England and it's like you got this kind of North American band and, and do a showcase there, try Australia, some of the other, the Commonwealth. There's a, I guess it's a bit of a drive, that's all. It's yeah, a bit of a trek, but it's like, you know, it could be drive. worth it because if you can get, start getting that, that's the whole thing. I've always felt like the Dreamboats, uh, you know, we've wanted to make this an international band. And I feel like, you know, Canada, we, we scratched the surface a little bit. In the U.S., now we're starting to get around. And by next year, if all goes to plan, we're going to be getting around. But I do want to take this band, you know, to, to the U.K., to Europe, and, and doing big rooms, you know. It's just so, got to make sense on, on all fronts. Like, for them financially to bring us over there, be you know, for their, you know, for us to make a presence online for there to, to be a want and a need for us to be playing in those those places. But I think we just keep on doing what we're doing. We're getting some good online traction and I hope that translates uh, a lot overseas. And uh, yeah, we end up over in the in Europe or something. In the or Netherlands. Asia. I was going to say that. That's funny. In Holland. <laughs> This summer, we were doing a lot of gigs to L.A. and uh, living out in the desert here. I feel like people are always like, oh, you guys drove here? Are you spending the night? I'm like, spending the night? It's a two and a half hour drive. We eat that thing for breakfast. Especially when the next show is 15 minutes away from the city we're currently <laughs> in. I know. Oh, God. Are you guys I, going I back just... to the desert? Yeah. I mean, yeah. ideally, I'd like to stay in a hotel, but some people like to sleep with their pillows and their Teddy yeah, bears. but it just then you got to get into the, like the gas cost versus the hotel, and then we got to shack up, Richie. We got to get a Motel Six sponsorship. That's what we That's need. What we, get. we do, we do. But I feel like yeah, drives. I mean, I know we did the uh, California State Fair. It wasn't the the craziest of gigs, but we drove uh, eight hours. It was the craziest of uh, drives. That's for sure. Eight hours. Johnny was like so so apologetic <laughs> booking this eight hour gig and like I was like, like oh guys, we got to do eight hours. No, that, you can't be taking that on. Like that's we're, we're happy we ended up playing the the gig. Felt like it's twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, not know what we got ourselves into but <laughs> yeah. made the best of it I guess yeah we made the best of it mm-hmm. I guess sometimes uh, not every gig is good what was the next one after that we came back to West, West Covina, Covina which was a great gig that was a great gig it's, I think that's another example of like when we're all lagged out we end up playing crazy shows there was so much travel going on this summer and I know Justin's always been on this tip as far as being as close to LA as possible and uh, and, and here like Palm Springs in the desert it just feels like it feels safe. It does feel like home in a way, but I feel like you know, there's people know of us. We've made our presence felt here, and and I feel like it's time to kind of I, personally. I want to move on. I want I want to go a little closer to the belly of the beast, um, and and not only try to make you know new connections, but also the lifestyle out there. Be a little closer to the beach, figure that out, see what that's all about as well, and also for the fact that. What was it like 13, 14 of our gigs, summer gigs were all in like the heart of that. And we're just driving back. That's <laughs> true. Like it's just, and I have a feeling that next year we're going to be doing um, a lot more of those gigs. Uh, we had a great reputation of that uh, from like the, from 2023. It was the reasons why we got all of these gigs here. And I feel like it's going to grow from there. So I think, uh, I think LA is the new, the new chapter uh, five, chapter five. What are your thoughts on that, Justin? I know, I know. Yeah, you, I'm down to turn that page. Let's do it. I'm down to. I just want to make sure we can find a spot for all our gear. That's it. The reality I don't know, is we have price. like numerous vehicles. We have a trailer. We got a bunch of people now. There's a couple dogs in the house, and it's like we got a lot going on. So we just gotta. Or maybe like, we get all, all logistic. Maybe we we'll all branch out. Imagine that. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we Richie's all gonna be in room. Venice, though. He he wants to be close to the park. I want to be close to the skate park. Yes, in the in the calisthenics park. I would like to be close to a beach too. In a perfect world, that would be that would be a dream. I'm yeah. a dolphin, and this is and I think it's you all just it's, it's all just steps. It's all just steps, and like you know, having these conferences come up, we know that you know if, if we can start seeing bookings happening all through the year, then we can start you know looking at the finances and make that decision. So I think it's just all a However, gradual step. I also like the idea of being a bit of a an international band where you can almost be like wherever you want. You know, you're doing the tours and and going out and doing stuff and then anyone could be wherever they want. Exactly, yeah. You know, yeah, that yeah. would that would be like an absolute As long as we dream. all get together when we need to and and rehearse the songs that we need to go over. The sky's the limit. It sounds like a dreamboat to me. Live right on the now. moon. Johnny. Yeah, and Johnny's favorite words. I guess we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get boys. to that in a few moments. See how it goes. <laughs> okay. Well, that was I, fun. I think that's good. Okay, we're gonna do uh, that. That was it. We're gonna wrap it up here. Episode eight. That's that. We will see you all next time. And peace. Th- that's, that's that. that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that.